Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Red. This year <laughs> at the round table of dim lighting is 2023. Fresh. And we are going to get started with the first episode of 2023 by talking about first impressions. And specifically, uh, first impressions that people, mostly you people, have had of us. Uh, and this is really a, uh, what I hope will be a way for us to learn some lessons about how you know, we put ourselves out there over the years in many different forms, and we've been received in many different ways, as you will see, and see if we can learn anything. Maybe if we need to make any uh, ad- ad- adjustments or just at we're, least- you We're know, still making first impressions, information, hopefully. Information is good. All information is good. Take it and do what oh. you will with it. Well, information exists. What you do with it determines if it was good or not. Uh, yeah, you know. can do good things with information. And you know what? It's, I think it's just fun to think about first impressions. So as we're talking about ours, maybe you wanna think about the first impressions that you make on people. One of my favorite slogans of any product, mm. like I, the one that just really stands out for me is, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Of course, don't I don't know what it. product that is. Head and shoulders, right? Or sell some blue. <laughs> you don't know. I thought it was big red gum. See, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. It's a dandruff shampoo. I am 90% sure of that. 90% sure of this, a dandruff shampoo. Okay. And, and it's, it's probably it's head and shoulders. Is, well, head, I thought and shoulders it was gum. Is, head and shoulders is like, but you don't have dandruff. Exactly. And if they also did, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. They did? Head and, sh- head and shoulders is the best. It's the best product, product on the planet. It's the best product on the planet. I don't know if it works, but. Oh, um, I still, I use, I use, head, you know, everybody asks me all the time, what do you do to get your hair? I use head and shoulders conditioner. Okay? Oh, wow. Not use, a sponsor. I use head and shoulders supreme, which is their like one that doesn't have the weird stuff in it. And Elise Myers uses it as a face wash. And oh, really? Swear, and swears by it on TikTok. Hey, it's good, man. <laughs> so I who like kn- that, I like that Pythion zinc. I think it's one of the best slogans. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. I don't know if they came up That's with That's true. It. I think they just commandeered it. It's true, slogan. man. And it's, it's so powerful. And you never know. I mean, you can't control what people think of you. So like, it, you know, I don't want to go overboard in, in this thing. But it's, it's nice to know how you're perceived, in my opinion. And, but it's really hard to know sometimes. When you have a longstanding relationship with somebody, like we have a Mythical Beast, and by the way, a few employees who wrote in, wrote in, who called in and left voicemails. Um, it's fun to then. We might have to get Jenna's opinion on this. And too, Jenna too. She's here. It's fun to hear what people, you know, what did you, now that we know each other really well, what did you think of me the first time we met? I don't, you know, ask, uh, ask, the, ask the people you care about now about back before they knew that they cared about you, what did they think of you, you know? Could be fun, could be fun. I tend to not like the fact that that is true uh, because I tend to, one of the things I believe about myself is that I consistently do not make a good first impression. Okay, in, in what way? Um, I just, you know, I have it, you might say that I don't come across as warm, yeah, I don't, I don't, when I meet somebody for the first time, I'm in very much sort of a observational uh, standpoint and I'm not trying to get them to think anything about me. And then about, and then like halfway through the evening, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have done something to make this person think a certain way about me. So you were just assessing your first impression of them, not realizing that your face was just very concentrated. I think a lot of times when I'm meeting somebody, my thought, process is honestly is this person worth the investment of uh, of like oh wow but you know me committing to whatever more more with them whatever that more is you know it's, well more friendship maybe more another maybe another way to say it is is there something here you know it seems like i i don't think you're making a value judgment i think so i'm asking a clarifying question 
Do you mean like, is there something here? Could we be fill in the blank? Friends, business partners, what, whatever the nature of the conversation is in the context of it, kind of, it, 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 the blank will be filled in in different ways. But that's, isn't that kind of what you're saying? Is like, is there something here? Is there some sort of chemistry? It takes um, a lot. Or am I wrong? No, I'm, well, I, I th- this, this is how I understand it. It's not specifically that. It's that it takes me kind of getting to a certain level of comfort with someone before I'm like, I'm gonna show you the real ret. And it might take meeting you a few times before I do that. And that's not just a, are you worth the investment? Sometimes it's that, like we, we talk, we've talked many times about how the fa- like uh, I especially am not, like I'm not trying to be funny most of the time, unless I'm in entertainment mode. Now, most of the time that means there's a camera. Sometimes that means there's a group of people who I think could benefit from me being entertaining. Um, but like, it takes me, I have to make a conscious decision. Like, all right, you're gonna go into that mode? This mm-hmm. mode of like, I'm a guy that will say and do funny things. And, but me just, my natural disposition is not that. My natural disposition is I am present. And if you ask me a question, I will answer it. I'll, I'll talk to you about anything. I'll talk to anyone about anything. I'm not reserved in that way, but I am reserved in terms of like giving yourself to somebody. Yeah, and be, and, and, and so that makes and Jesse sense. gets frustrated with me sometimes because she's got somebody that she wants me to meet, and she'll have to be like, "Now you need to like try with them, turn on, or like be warm to them." Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not that I'm cold; it's just that when you're not especially warm, you can be perceived as cold. Especially when your resting face is more of a, um, how would I describe Bitch. it? No, no, just look at me. Rest your face and look at me. Um, but, but be engaged. Like, I, hey, your, your brow furrows and you're in deep thought. Well, you seem to be in like, it does seem to be like, well, oh my gosh, what is this guy thinking? I'm gonna throw that one right back at you because most of the time, me well, and we can, you- No, we can talk about me. Me and you are in a, in a Zoom meeting. I look at you and at me, when right. we're in, and I realize that both of us are looking at the person like this. Furrowed brows. I mean, especially a meeting, yeah. When it comes to a meeting, we're very, we're concentrating and we're thinking. And I'm like, man- We're in our brains. I would not want these two guys to be looking at me like that. And I try to then soften my face a little bit, and then I realize that I just don't, what, what, what do you- I, then I just look like I'm falling asleep. One of the best things that came out of the pandemic for me was that I can be in a meeting and look at myself exclusively. <laughs> no, but wow. seriously, I can learn things about myself like that. It's like, if, if you've been on Zoom calls for these past two and a half years and you haven't learned anything about the energy you're putting out into the world, yeah, hey, you, need to, you, need, you, need to, you need to observe yourself a little bit. Now, we didn't, I didn't change as much as maybe I thought I should, but yeah, you alter your you alter yourself a little bit. It's like, oh, I need to, I need to turn up the corners of my mouth a little. Bit. Well, if somebody's like, I need to be a supportive, li- active listener, or like pitching an idea, or especially something, if they're talking to us, like, shit, nod right, your head nod a little the bit. head. Do you know there's a, there's AI now that you as a, you can use as a plugin on Zoom that keeps your eyes uh, in contact with the camera no matter what you do. <laughs> there's a guy on TikTok who <laughs> That's demonstrated awesome. it. And so, and he's, it's like a plug freaky. But it looks completely normal, so he's just like kind of like well, What if you look down like all this. the way? Well, I don't want you to repeat your anything. Phone. I had you on, now if I have it on Do Not Disturb, doesn't that mean that Siri shouldn't disturb me? Definitely. Well, how come she didn't get the message? She's in the phone. I don't have a relationship with Siri. Well, I try not to. That Bre- was unintentional. Just break up with Siri right now. I don't know how you do that. I, I wasn't, I mean, I, when I said I was gonna look at your face, I wasn't, you know, I, I know you probably thought I was gonna give you a, a cheap shot, but I, I didn't. I was, I'm, I'm really interested in this. I think that you were, that it was just, it's a level of intensity that could be intimidating. I mean, when you com- combine it with height and like the bigness of the beard and hair, but we can switch to me. For me, I think my first impressions uh, probably just run the gamut because <laughs> it's so mood based for me. When I'm meeting people for the first time, I think it has it's it's so much what vibe I'm in. Like, 
I don't know if I'm. Yeah, I I will just exude whatever my emotions are like, and I am being like, and I will take it up a notch like. So it's not just I'm being myself. It's like whatever self I am in kind of in that that day or that night. I think I that's what I that's the energy that I I try to harness that into social interaction, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Well, it's, I have uh, a funny. Uh, it comes off a funny anecdote. I, about I'm. This. <clears throat> we were uh, recently in a in a setting of really interesting people uh, together. Interesting people. Um, and the guy from West Coast Customs. Oh yeah, and his entire family were in this uh, small gathering, basically. <laughs> and I saw you talking to him and the family for an extended period of time, and uh, and then. I was like, I'm gonna go see what who Link's talking to. So I go over there, and uh, within 20 seconds, the wife of West Coast Customs, the guys, w- was like, "Your friend is a." D-. <laughs> uh, we, so we, I we, thought that we was had, pretty interesting. We had developed a rapport. Yeah, I I could tell she was saying it. She was joking. She was being funny, but yeah. like she was commenting on your. Uh, she was very feisty. Your your. Um, I don't need, have. I haven't yet come up with a word for it. But how I would think, you describe it? Uh, projecting because she was. A okay. Yep. And I I I really liked her for it. Like I mean, she was she was dishing it out as much as she was taking it. Let okay. me tell you that. And I think she started it. Oh, because so you think it's for if, she, if, if somebody's giving it to you. She entered the conversation late, and so, um, so her family introduced her to me. Is how I remember it as like, oh, I we know who this guy is, and she's like, I don't know who you are, but that's how the conversation started. So I was like, okay, I see where we're going with this. I two can play this game. I kind of like this. So yeah, that we we were both we were both doing okay. It. So, because that in that particular instance, I was very much in a, in a, in a, in a playful, in a playful mode. Whatever, wherever you're going to go with this, I'm going to go with it. But if I am, a, if I'm in kind of a grumpy zone, yeah, I might be a little too sarcastic with people. And um, there's lots of times when I come back from stuff where I I'm, I've met a number of people for the first time, some sort of mixer party type scenario. And I just sit there and just think about what what everybody thinks of me and how, and I just, I start to feel bad and I'm like, did I get their number so that I can apologize? Like these things happen hmm. to me a lot. Or like, so I do try to, I'm trying to be more aware of that. Um, but for the most, I think for the most part, I err on the side of like being more winsome, but but maybe too extra. And I'm definitely talking like party zone at mm. this point. Because that's where you meet people for the first time a lot of times, unless you're putting content out on the internet and people are just watching you for, and then you're just, obviously we've done everything that, when we put stuff out there on the show, we're trying to make the best first impression because we want, we, want, we want more mythical beasts, right? So it's, but at the same that's time, that's a different thing. Uh, I would say that the filter with which, uh, we the filter that we apply to what goes on the internet is way different than it was ten years ago. Definitely. I mean, I was talking to Jesse. I'd rather the other I'd night. rather much more be myself now than win over a fan who thinks I'm somebody I'm not. And, and I, I think that people respond positively. I don't. To that. And I'm not talking. It I, took a long time. I'm to get not there. talking about that. That's true. The the vulnerability piece of it, but that's actually not what I'm talking about. What, okay. what I'm talking about is if you go back ten years we curated every single thing that we put on the internet because we were putting a lot less on the internet. Now mm-hmm, with a podcast, mm-hmm. with a daily show, and then an after show, yeah, we're not constantly trying to be exactly who we think that, I mean, we're being ourselves Packaged. a lot. And as has been evidenced many, many times, lots of people don't like me or you or us, and that because they've made a decision that, or I don't like this aspect of them, and that's just a part of putting yourself out on the internet. Right. And then when it comes to, you know, uh, even pictures, I, I, you know, because sometimes Jesse and I would like go to an event, and we've got pictures that we're then posting, and she and she's like, 
you know, if I'm gonna post pictures that have me and her in it, well, she, because she has not put herself out nearly as much as I have on the internet, and also, I think it, it, my particular opinion is that women have a much harder time uh, uh, on the internet than men because they are constantly objectified and criticized and put into, and you know, their physical appearance is pointed out much more quickly than it is for a man. So that whole thing for her is like, I'm going to approve, like she's going to look and make sure that the pictures of her that are going up on my feed are ones that she approves. When she asked me that question, I'm like, baby, people have seen me I mean, I am a meme for for a man with and without a beard. Like I, <laughs> the, the worst thing I like, I might as well just have the I, the most unflattering things you could ever see from me: angles, expressions, everything. It's on the internet for everyone to see. You, I, you never need to approve any photo that, of me that goes up, and that's that's changed a little bit, a little bit every single year. Even stuff you remember, we used to approve every single photo that would go out officially like through a mythical thing, like this is gonna be on a banner. Now, sometimes it's, we still do that. Like if it's gonna be like the YouTube banner, oh, I kinda want a photo that I kinda think I look better than not. Yeah. But more often than not, it's just like, oh, there's another thing that is going, there's another merch picture. I don't, I, I quit looking at them because I don't like the way I look 90% of the time. So you, I just, I've just kinda let go of that. Yeah. Um, there's nowhere to hide for us. So it's I, kind of a good thing. So I think that in some ways I've just, the, my, I don't know. I th I think differently about first impressions in general now because there's yeah, so many different versions that have gone out there. Yeah, when it comes to our public persona, but back to like the interpersonal, like, am I meeting someone who's going to be a friend? And am I about to screw it up and short circuit the whole thing? I would just summarize it for me as I, I don't want to be misinterpreted as a jerk, and I definitely don't want to actually be a jerk. And both of those things could happen sometimes. Not, but it's the minority of t this is a really small minority where I'm actually a jerk, and then there's a good piece of the pie that's still less. I mean, I'd say I don't know what percentage it is. I would hope it's twenty five percent of the time or less. Like hopefully less than twenty percent of the pie is I'm, I actually mean well, but I can I'm easily m misinterpreted or easily interpreted as being a jerk. But then. A lot of times it's just like, okay, this dude, this dude is 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 a nice guy, or I don't know what a something guy. That's that's my thing. I don't want to be interpreted as a jerk. What about you? What are you most concerned about? I think that my philosophy is if this is someone that I uh, want there to be something more, like I like, oh, this is somebody I would want to be a friend with. Um, or this is someone we would want to work with or whatever. I think my philosophy is most likely if I just was myself without trying and also even if I was understated and didn't say a whole lot, like that person probably has the wherewithal to pick up on the things about me that they like. And if I, again, if I think that this is something worth pursuing, I feel like there could be a more intentional second interaction. Like I actually don't put a lot of stock in the first impression. I'm not saying that it's not true, but I'm saying that I don't, I don't live my life as if the first impression is super important because I know that I'm not good at them and I haven't had any experience ever where I had a interaction with somebody that I really liked and then I didn't, I wasn't able to continue that or, or further it because of something I did wrong the first time we got together. Okay, well that's good, just remember, you never get a second chance to make a second impression either. It is a good slogan. Second impression. Let's get into some voicemails about us, but first let's promote some crap. Oh, uh, it's, the, it's the start of the year. So we have a, a, a Dispatches from Myrtle Beach, my dad's podcast with me. This month we're launching a video version. Uh, so look for the launch of that YouTube channel. If you wanna watch my interaction with my dad, uh, I highly recommend it. Um, check it out if you haven't. It's uh, it's an important part of of my life now. So maybe it become an important part of your life. Also, a hot dog is a sandwich. Uh, Josh and Nicole's podcast from the Mythical Kitchen is back, and it also mm -hmm. now has a video component. Great its format. Own YouTube channel. If you don't know, tell them what the format is. They basically take controversial food opinions and pit them against one another. You know the whole 
a, is a hot dog a sandwich. That's the whole, the whole idea there. Their and, interactions um, are great. And they're, I mean, listen, this is like very consistently one of the top food podcasts, very well respected. Deservedly the, so. Within the culinary world, because listen, Josh and Nicole are not us. They actually know things about food, like significant things about food. Like they're very well informed and you, just you fun can, to listen to. You won't, you not only get hungry, but you'll also learn some stuff about why you're, about the things you're hungry for. And you'll be hungry for more of their podcast. Hot dog is a sandwich. Ear Biscuits is supported by BetterHelp. You know what makes me feel good? You mean besides talking to me? Yes, Red, that makes me feel good. But besides that, it makes me feel good to be my best self, man. Oh. You know, to give myself the attention and the work I need to be my best self. You know what I'm getting at? Okay, yeah. Well, to be my best self, I usually, I, uh, I unbutton the top two buttons on my shirt. So today I'm not being gonna my best self. Why you do that? And now I am being my best self. But you know what? You can't always be your best self. That is an impossible task. But working with a therapist could definitely get you closer to that best version of yourself, and BetterHelp is a great step to get you there. You know, we're big fans of therapy and having access to therapy. I mean, one of my top moments of last year was the growth that I experienced in therapy. Yeah, it was, there a, you it, have it was it. a top moment for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> my growth. You, you, your therapy. Okay, yeah. No, therapy has been really important uh, for both of us. That's why we talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And we think that more people should have access to therapy and that's why we're a big fan of BetterHelp. Yeah, the cool thing about BetterHelp is that it's entirely online so you can take that appointment from anywhere, especially if it's your first time with therapy. It'll help ease your nerves uh, if you're uncomfortable with it. So just fill out a questionnaire so they can match you with the right person and if they somehow did not match you with the licensed therapist of your dreams, you can always switch and it will not cost you anything extra. If you wanna live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ear. Hey, what's up, Britain Link? This is Richard. I'm calling from Las Vegas, Nevada. Yo. I'm such a such a huge, 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 huge fan of Rhett and Link and Good Mythical Morning. And you guys are this uh so freaking hilarious. Anyways, I'm calling uh I'm calling about your most recent tweet that you guys put out. Do you remember the first time you saw us on the internet? Yeah. I remember it very, very vividly. I was scrolling through a link aggregator website called Gorilla Links. And it was just a just a thumbnail of you of of you two Rhett and Link sitting in a polo ranch. And I just thought it was so unique and so weird. I just I decided to click on it, it went to your YouTube video and from that day I fell in love with you. You guys are so so freaking hilarious. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna keep listening to to Ear Biscuits. I'm gonna keep watching the show. Okay, yeah, we he okay. That got it, weird. It sounded like he was gonna say handsome. That got I just weird. Gotta, it's say when he said when he said hilarious. I just feel like he was about to. You know, he, I feel like he was gonna say handsome. We have, we accept the love. You know, if you see two guys in ranch, a tub full of ranch, like all the way up over their faces. That's quite a first impression. And for him, that's exactly what he needed to fall in love. Because I think some people would see that and be like, I'm not in, I, I'm not interested in that, you know? Uh, I mean, frankly, uh, if I saw that, I would not want more. Like, me personally. But did I Did we the, get any but, of those? But, but, but a see. lot of people did want more. Hi, Rhett and Link, my name's Donna. Um, I wanted to share the first time I saw you guys on the internet. Um, my boyfriend got a link to one of your videos. It happened to be the Will It Meatloaf uh, episode, and I he was watching it. I happened to walk in right as you guys were trying the Taco Bell meatloaf, and I remember thinking it was the grossest thing I had ever seen. I was like, what the heck? Who the heck are these guys? This is so disgusting. I thought it was so stupid. And then um, kind of lo and behold, we just randomly started watching you guys, and... Since 
then I think I've watched every single episode and gone back to catch up on all the other ones too. So, um, you know, not the best first reactions, uh, you know, first impression, but um, I do love you guys. And now, now I get it. Now I understand uh, in the, in the moment I did it, but, um, but yeah, it, I will never forget that. So hope you guys have a great day. Disgusting and stupid. Those are, that was her first impression. Yeah. And somehow we won her over like that. Hey, that feels pretty good. I mean, it doesn't get worse. I mean, those are some pretty pretty bad terms. What I also think is probably the most common first impression. <laughs> uh, we do less disgusting now, but. But I'm saying that. Stupid is pretty par for the course. I, I think if you go back to the period of time in which we were gaining uh, subscribers at the highest rate we ever had. Yeah. Which is like 14, 15, when the algorithm was changing and all that. And so it was just like rewarding our content and suggesting it to everybody. Mm -hmm. That was when we were kind of in the heyday of hot peppers and gross stuff. Yeah. And that was when it really worked. It doesn't work nearly as well anymore. And I, so I think that if you just do like a, an evaluation of the fan base, I think that this first impression is probably the most common. Like if you had to group it into like, they were doing something disgusting stupid. And stupid. Yeah, disgusting and stupid. I yeah. mean, that could have been the name of the show. It could have been the name of us. Yeah. Which one do you want to be? But we couldn't be contained by those two terms, right? Uh, let's see this one. This didn't hurt too bad yet. Hi, Rhett and Link. Um, my first impression of you guys was introduced to me when I was in high school. Uh, I was in youth group at the time, and um, my youth minister would play your guys' videos uh, during our youth group. And I remember the first time he played a video, he kind of advertised it as, this is stuff like we would do at youth group, like playing silly games or eating weird food. Um, so, and it's funny now to know your guys' journey through deconstruction and also mine. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks, bye. Yeah, I think that the, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this because I'm sure that there's many a youth pastor out there who has a lot of regrets <laughs> for, Maybe not. for introducing uh, our content into their youth curriculum. But we put out a lot of youth group energy. I mean, that we was did. an era. I mean, because we, we came from youth group energy. So yeah, even though we never said we want to make Good Mythical Morning like a like a youth group with two guys who uh, aren't allowed in the youth groups anymore because of their age, and now I guess because of their beliefs. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we I I was very self conscious about putting out that youth pastor energy. I'm yeah. glad she didn't go that far. It's like these guys are just like me, you know. Well, I think we. I think we hit the youth pastor energy pretty hard for pretty a hard. Pr pretty long time. And yeah. we, I mean, listen. Talk we, about first impressions of like other YouTubers that we were meeting. I bet if we go back and ask in that, if they may not have those words, but like when we started meeting YouTubers, they ha everybody like would try to figure us out and they were like, I think it came down to youth, youth pastor energy. But, uh, but here's, here's the thing I gotta say that now that we're in Los Angeles, that if you were to survey a group of people in Los Angeles and you were to give them multiple choice as to what we do for a living, and you gave youth pastor, I mean, look at what you've got on, look at what I've got, I mean, especially what you've got on, right? those glasses and your hair. Like, okay. And, and even what I've got on, like, uh, like if you're talking like metro area youth pastor. Really? We're, we're still, cause they're, cause, yeah, we're still, because anyone who looks like they're trying to not look their age, that's the quintessential sign of a youth pastor. If you have, a, if you come from that world, if you do that in the South, you're going to look a certain way, you know. Yeah. If you do that in Los Angeles, you're going to look. I mean, you obviously, I would say this is a cool look, but I'm saying that that, it, but it looks like somebody who's trying to look cool. And I'm saying I do the same thing. That is, that's a that's youth pastor energy. On, that's like West Coast youth oh, pastor God. energy. So I I'm hate just, that you're telling me. This. I'm just saying you can't get away from it because. But it's in the behind the uh, it's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> it's in the behind of the beholder. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying you should change anything, or I should change. I don't know anything, what they do in your youth group, but I feel like that is the that's what youth pastor energy is. It's someone who is hanging out with kids a lot and trying to kind of appeal to them by the way they dress and the way they do their hair, or whatever. 
I, I just want to be on record to say I every fashion choice I'm making now is only to appeal to myself. Okay. And you, you're a youth pastor. Here we go. Hey, Rhett and Link. Um, the first time that I saw y'all was probably back in 2012. And the first impression that I remember having is, man, these guys should get new haircuts. Um, and eventually that did happen. So congratulations on evolution. These guys should get new what haircuts. What year did she say? 2012? Yeah. Yeah, we've had some... We've had some some low points. Here's a good follow up, I think. Hey, Red Link, it's me, Daniel. Um, been watching you guys for a while. I just wanted to say I forgot what you guys asked. I'm like, uh, what did I think when I saw you or something like that? Well, I first saw you guys when you started trending in like 2015. So back then, I must have been like 12, 13. Oh, the one thing I remember is at the time I had a bowl cut. And this was before 2016, so before Link had cut his hair. So I remember watching him and being like, man, Link is just like me. <laughs> oh, man, that is so cool. He's got a bowl cut just like me. He's awesome. It's He's not like a bowl popular cut. and stuff. It wasn't a bowl cut. He's got glasses. And that made me feel good about having glasses. And that, that was really cool. But um, Barrett. Rhett was like, Rhett was crazy. He was like, he was like that guy I wanted to be, you know what I mean? <laughs> Link was like the, the guy I was. <laughs> <laughs> they were awesome too. <clears throat> this dude didn't even remember the prompt at the beginning of this. Well, then Link got a haircut. And uh, yeah, I love both of you guys. That's All right, I, I'm Bye. never going to forget. Rhett was the guy I wanted to be and Link was the guy that I was. <laughs> How know. does he feel now? I, I would like know. to know. He said he loves us both, man. All right, let's go to some employees. I'm really because... gonna, I'm really gonna hold on to that. So, Mike Dad Magic Paisley called in. I we do not know what he said. Hey, this is Mike Paisley calling from cloudy Burbank, California, uh, and I'm talking about the first time I met Rhett and Link. It was almost ten years ago, and they were two YouTubers that I'd never heard of, but. <clears throat> They were a big ass deal at the time because they had almost 2 million subscribers. And so when they came to the Digital Twigs studio downtown, we were very excited to meet these, these big time YouTubers. And they brought Stevie, their producer, and they brought their wives and they brought their kids. And it totally took out all of the like anxiety of meeting these, like, uh, these YouTube guys because they just seemed like regular dudes with kids. And it was a really charming experience. And so... Um, I never really liked him though. I, uh, ever since that day, I, I wish I hadn't encountered them. <laughs> JK, JK. That's my story about meeting Rhett and Link for the first time. It was great. And, uh, I'll never forget it. I'll Wait. never forget it either. Yeah. Because that was awesome. we knew that they were going to do, uh, they were working on the intro for the, the mythical, mythical show, show, which was the stop motion animation. And we were like, this is going to be super cool. It's so cool. Let's Go back bring, and watch it. Let's bring all of our families to this studio, this li the little studio that they had. Yeah. Cause they were building it all practically as like this, as, as like was scale cool. models of like a cool. tree growing out of a volcano under an underground volcano. And like, yeah. Paisley was so kind, like to show our kids like how everything worked, and it was awesome. It was awesome. And now, you know, all these years later, he's we got him all to ourselves, working for us. Well, before you move to the next one, you're moving pretty quickly. My my impression of you right now is that you're moving through these very quickly, and we're not talking oh. about them. Just so you know. Oh, okay. Um, going back to the uh, youth pastor thing. Uh, not what we were talking about, but a very real thing that we've we've talked about is the impression that we have, and you might remember the details of this, but like conversations that we have had with people that we met back in those earlier days, um, where there was a um, kind of this undercurrent, a little bit of tension. You know, I talked with Pete Holmes about this because I went back on the his podcast to talk about a human overboard and we were talking about the first time that we came on the show which was at the end of 2019 before we told our deconstruction story publicly in 2020 on this right, podcast right and we actually talked about it on the podcast he was like yeah there was this sort of 
um, I can't remember the word that he used to describe it, but when you know that someone wants to be able to talk about something, but then doesn't, that was a certain energy, but I'm actually saying, go back to those early days. And really, it, this was mostly when we were in North Carolina and then the very early days in California where um, we were both still identifying as, a, as Christians. And even as I was like coming out of that in like 2012, 2013, I still, I was sort of like coming out of it in an intellectual way, but in terms of just the way my brain worked and the way I saw the world, a lot of that was still kind of intact. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of bring like a suspicion to people of the world, you know what I'm saying? And even in some of those early ear biscuits where we would interview with somebody, interview somebody and we're asking them these questions, but then not disclosing, can you remember any of the conversations experience. that we've had in the in subsequent years about, hey, how did we come across? Did we, because I remember somebody telling us that, yeah, you guys had some um, like holy energy or something. I can't remember how it was described. But I think that was something that I have since been able to observe. And not just, in, not I'm not gonna single out any anybody of a particular faith, but anyone who has an agenda, and that agenda is, I want you to think like me, and I want you to agree with me. And this is something that everyone, including myself, falls into on a pretty regular basis. I'm tr I've gotten much better at it, and I'm trying to get better at it. But when you kind of bring that into a conversation, it's, it's pretty palpable. Yeah. That can color a first impression. Well, I mean, it, being raised in the evangelical belief system by definition is you want to win people over like you 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 believe that Jesus actually commanded you to do that mm -hmm. to make disciples so to speak well in in to use the terms so you know and it will be for this person's benefit as and well. it and it's and you're not doing it for you it's like so all of a sudden a first impression gets wrapped up in like you, there's this level of self-awareness that, okay, I am different in some ways. So one of the most easy, easy ways that you can notice at first are like, okay, how clean my language is, or the things that I am not going to do. Maybe that's not drink for some people, or maybe it's not dance for some, some religious people people mm -hmm. yeah. you know so it's there's these certain ways where you start to you have to be aware if you want to you want to make a positive impression because you want to represent your relationship with god in a way that wins people over that entices people that th these are literally things that paul talks about in the bible you know this is how you need to go about your life in a way that helps people by winning them over to the cause of the faith. Mm -hmm. So you're aware of these things where you stick out as different and you know, you get to, you, you, I, I think for me, I developed a little bit of a complex on that front because it's, first impression is not just about are people gonna like me, but are people gonna like God? That's a lot of pressure, <laughs> you know? And, um are the things that make me different, it's so hard for it just not to imply judgment, like silent judgment. I'm not, no, I don't, I don't do that. It's kind of, I mean, if somebody is, um, has been sober for years and they say, you know what, um, I'm sober or I'm in recovery or whatever terms they use, it's very clear that it's about, this is my process yeah. and it kind of short circuits judgment. You know, but we weren't, but, but that, I don't do that. I don't do that. A, but I don't do that as a, do that as a just a moral thing. Then so how you doing it is immoral. How could it? So is in, the implication? It was so hard to have that conversation, and it didn't seem like an effective way in. That you just find yourself hoping that nobody notices, and that's the complex. I think that dynamic is actually still very present, and probably more present than ever in our culture. And I don't think that it is. So we we related to that context from a Christian standpoint. Mm -hmm. But I think that our, our, in America, we're so politically polarized at this point. Interesting. That, um, 
if you're somebody on the left and you're talking to somebody on the right and you find out that they're on the right, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for you to not have immediate judgment in your words and your face now as it, you're interacting with them and vice versa. Vice versa. Vice versa, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't like to do the both sides thing. I am on one side of this. You know, I'm on the left side. But the psychology but, of it plays both ways. Yeah, and I think that it it actually is something that has really short-circuited what could be uh, fruitful conversations between people, I think, is that there is this like, okay, because you identify, and this is, some, this is a new phenomenon. Like I've been reading a lot about just like people, people who are really studying polarization right now because it is more pronounced than it than it has been in the recent past. I mean, sure, maybe way back in the day, but like it's super pronounced right now. And there is and there's there's good reason. I'm not saying that you know, oh, abandon your principles, but in terms of immediately categorizing somebody as okay, if you identify in this way, then I can assume all these different things about you, and I actually cannot have a meaningful dialogue with you, and I'm going to judge every single thing you say, and I'm going to judge every single thing you do versus see, oh, you know what? Most likely you are also a human person who based on your own intuition and your circumstances and your environment and your psychological disposition came to these conclusions that you are currently at and they may be different than mine, but you're still a human and we're still all in this together. How do we have a fruitful conversation? Um, it's just, I, it's something that, you don't experience very often out here because we, this is a pretty homogenous in, in political environment in Los Angeles. Um, but it's something that you go back to the home in North Carolina. I was actually talking to my brother about this. I was like, you know, you're, you live in a super purple place, you know, like, you know, and you kind of forget that when you live in a super red or a super blue place, mm -hmm. you kind of forget about those very, very purple places like these Southern metro areas uh, where on a daily basis, you're gonna have meaningful interactions and you're also going to have to have meaningful, um, meaningful like collaborations with people from all over the spectrum. Like you have to do meaningful things. You have to get things done. You have to have an interaction with somebody. You have to purchase something from somebody. You have to do a deal with you someone. Have to, you have to work with or work for. You have work to work for. with. Yeah. And if you're just gonna be like, oh, you're on the other end of this spectrum, a spectrum that I believe stands for everything that is wrong and is everything that is wrong with our country and everything that is evil in our country. Uh, you, that, that energy comes across. It just comes across in your interactions. In the same way that our energy of like, well, this is who we are and this is what we believe about things. And because I've been on both sides of that, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to be conscious of it in a way because the point I think is to have a meaningful dialogue and to arrive at what how are we going to move forward you know yeah and there i think there are a lot of people who like to be put in a box if it's their box you know but i i don't i personally don't like that because i'm not so firmly i i you know it's i don't know it just as an i as a concept of not being taken as an individual human that has, with all of the complexities, is just not, it's, that's not a place, that's, that's not how I want to be received. Um, but I think that it's, for, apparently for some people they do. Yeah. On, 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 on whatever extreme, right? That's what, the, that's, that's what defines the extreme, in my opinion. Is that like, yeah, I, this is my box. And I, and I want you to know it. I want it to be the first thing you know about me. If I, you know, uh, mm. that's never really been who, who, who I wanted to be. And it's, I am not really interested in that place because you don't feel like you can, you know, no, you're not, there's not, talk about active listening, you know? If the first thing you say is, this is, my identity is my box. Like, then, oh, and that, well, I mean, that could sound very, uh, Interesting. Or my identity is my ideology. My identity is my ideology. It's like, well, okay, do I really want to keep talking to you if it's like, if that's it, if it's that simple? Like, even if I don't want to change your mind, even if I just want to interact with you as a person, you know, mm -hmm. it's just not appealing to me. Yeah. Um, but there, I do think there's a lot of people who that's not the case. Well, and, and who you disagree with about 
things. And it's that that's yeah, I I mean going back to the purple, living in the purple place, you know, it's I, I think that's something we don't benefit from, you know. There's benefits to it. You know, and I, I end up saying things like, you know, maybe this is the reason I'm glad to live where I live, because it just makes it easier. But I don't know, there's something good about being challenged, right? Well, I think so it's, I, I, I think, think it's, it's the nature of uh it's the nature of a democracy, it's the nature of our country. Right. And, there's and, a health there's and, a health to it. And it has functioned in a generally positive manner for most of the history of our country. And, mo- and we've moved from kind of a dark place to a less dark place. Like that's the general uh, progression that we have moved and it has come through the push and pull. Yeah, and hopefully of, that's of, a trajectory. Of progressivism and conservatism sort of like stretching the culture, the cultural blanket across time. Um, and so right now we're kind of in a place where the cultural blanket has been ripped apart and we're just two, people, two sides just standing there kind of looking at each other, holding one half of the country. Right. Uh, and it's just like, well, how do we get this thing back together and keep moving it? Because we have been moving towards equality for more people. That is the general disposition of humanity and culture over time. And that's, the, that's why I'm on the progressive side, because that's the, I want to keep pulling the blanket, but I don't want to pull it so hard that it, com- that it tears or it comes out of the conservatives' hands, because at that point, we'd have, no longer have a functional democracy. It's not easy to do. But I think that the moment we just rip it away and we're like, right. we're not even the same people anymore. Well, yeah, but we're still both citizens of the same country and you have this, your vote has the same power that my vote has. And what does it do me more good to sit there and make fun of you and call you an idiot? Or does it make more, does it, or me to have a constructive dialogue with you? If I think that I've got the, po- uh, the right point on this, don't I wanna maintain some kind of connection so I can have a conversation? I'm not saying to compromise that, your, your beliefs. I'm just saying, how do you still, how do you maintain a conversation? And it, you can, and you can, it's true to say it the other way too. Can you sit there and call me an idiot and then, and, and then expect me to actually listen to anything you have to say, <laughs> right? Right, yeah. It goes both ways. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to keep going? You want I to think we've on? officially pissed off as many people as we possibly could. How, could, how did goal. that piss off anybody? Because any time. I, I just feel like we didn't, I, I, we didn't take a stand on anything. Exa- except, exactly. Except, except that people should work together, but that pisses off people on both sides. That's the problem yeah, we're okay, in so right now. Okay, so now we're pissing off er, everybody, everybody on the extreme, both equally. extremes. Okay, I, I'm that, fine with that. But we are a country of extremes. That. That's where we are right now. That's all I'm saying. So by trying to say, is there some way that we can work together and move things forward? You're gonna piss both sides off. I'm just saying, you know, that's the state that we're in right I, now. I wish I could quote, of course, you know, who am I gonna quote right now if I could, but I can't, Bono, when he was on Brene Brown's podcast um, uh, back in December, it, I mean, he talks, he, I mean, in like a little, a, one little question, he talks about this. Um, and he kind of has this, he has his own theory about c- centrism. It's interesting. I'm I'm not gonna I can't quote it. But it's like it there's a reflection of that in this. So like, hey, I I feel like I feel like there's some there's some people that I can harbor with. Bono, he's a good guy. He's a good guy to to for a little safe harbor. Um I I wanna go to another KG called in. Now KG is relative um she, well, she's not a relative. She's a mythical crew member. Oh, I didn't she's, know that. She's, a, she, she's worked with us relatively short amount of time. Less than a year, I believe. Yeah. So, I, let me, let's see what she said. Hey, yo, it's your girl, KG. Um, and my first impression came from when I started watching you guys in college. I used to watch you guys oh. all four years, every morning. Um, right before I got ready for class, and the first impression I got off was these goofy, silly, curious guys um, that gave off the comforting dad vibes, <laughs> and that's why I would usually watch you guys, because the positive vibes you gave off the videos was just amazing, and it really helped me through all four years of college, and when I first met y'all, it was my second day at work, and I was in the zone doing my start paperwork, and I could see from the corner of my eye in the bullpen that two figures just, like, stopped. 
and I looked up and it's Rhett and Link. And I internally I'm freaking out and Link's like, oh, you're the new PA because they just sent out an email welcoming me into the company the day before. And I was like, yeah, it's me. My name is Carolina. And I was like, but people call me KG. And it was funny seeing them attempt to say my name. But I was like, no, it's good. Like, you can call me KG. Just call me KG. Or sometimes people call me Kevin Garnett. Just to make a joke. Rhett thought it was funny. Then we started talking about basketball. And then they welcomed me. I was like, so excited to see your work and like, happy that you're here. And it was just very welcoming. So the impression I got while watching their videos really, really like met with the in person impressions which is just insane because I looked up to you guys in college and and it's it's just crazy to work with y'all. So, yeah, I think the impression from watching you guys really met up to in person. Thanks, KG. Too nice. Jenna, come on. <laughs> you 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 got to you got to give us some dirt because okay. Right. I mean, like Paisley, <laughs> Paisley, Paisley was nice. KG was nice. No, but no other employees. No one, no one called, called in. in. I can't believe no one else called in. Uh, okay. People are afraid. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share the dirt. We, cause we met, uh, I had. At a bar. We met at a bar. Yeah. I <laughs> had submitted an application to work as your personal assistant and we had set up uh, a meeting in like a, a week a, a week later or so yeah but laura, your interview yeah my interview but then laura uh, my best friend who was doing makeup on the show uh, invited me as her plus one to your end of year holiday party <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay they're gonna be there in my head i'm just like i swear if they make me do some sort of interview at this party, it's going to be a no. It's going to be an absolutely oh, well. immediate no for me. And so I show up. A no to take the job? Okay, just keep yeah, going. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I'm just going to go to a party. I'm going to a party. We're not going to talk about how that I'm interviewing with them in a week. We're just, I'm just going to a party. Mm -hmm. So I show up and then you two are like one of the first two people that I see there. And so I introduced myself and I was like, hi, I'm, I'm Jenna. And, and immediately Link is like, hey, we should do the interview now. And I was yeah, I was about like, to say, <laughs> yeah, I about to say, you think that he's not going to do that? <laughs> and I go, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I immediately was like, absolutely not. This is your party. You should have fun. I know I'm going to have fun. Let's do our interview another time. At the regularly scheduled time. And that was yeah. the end of it. And that was the end of it. And I was like, okay, great. They didn't mind me saying no, and they didn't mind, uh, and they understand work-life balance. I was like, this is good. This is a good first step. I pushed back, and they were like, you're right, cool. And I was like, all right, okay, I could probably work for these guys. But then my whole thing at the party was getting to know Jesse and Christy. I was like, uh, I was, because. Good strategy. That always helps. Well, for me, I just, in the past assistant jobs that I had, they, some some were quite intense, and it was very much, there was no work-life balance, and um, some old boss's partners were less than kind mm. to me. <laughs> and that's, Oh, I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. They were, oh, they sorry, were They were less than kind, so I was like, I was like, okay, if their wife's going to be there, I'm going to get to know Jesse and Chrissy. If we get along... I'm, I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot with these guys because I like I wasn't really applying to. You were really looking to say no at every turn. I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah, you didn't want to get wrapped up in another bad situation. Yeah, I didn't want to get wrapped up. I I wasn't looking to, uh, be an assistant again because I didn't want to get in another bad situation. But I was like, I don't know, these guys sound cool. I ne I never heard of you before. The um Laura showed me your so dang dark video, and I was like, oh, that's fun. That's creative. That's uh, interesting. Like I like, I like that style. Uh, it's my favorite song of yours now, honestly. But, um, <laughs> but, no, yeah. when, but when I said, and that was the end of it, I was actually being facetious because I, I, I swear I remember interviewing you at the party. No. Like I remember sitting next to you. You sat down with me, and I was like, "Don't talk about this." And and then we started talking a little bit, and I was like, "You oh, had a boy. conversation, but we had like a, that, it was a that, conversation. It wasn't like a hardcore we, interview." Okay, so we had a we had a little power dynamic. If I happened. remember it correctly, if you thought it was a power dynamic, it wasn't for me. I thought we were just uh, chilling. No, no. <laughs> I, I kept making you say no to the interview. Yeah, which was, which was the interview. <laughs> 
So in my mind, I interviewed you. In your mind, you you stood up to be an interview. Well, I was like, I'm so chilling. we all, we both won. Well, so <laughs> was if, I? A jerk? If I remember correctly, no. I know that I knew that. And there's no, you're not going to keep him from doing something like that. So I knew that was going to happen. I knew I would not do that, and I knew that you um, would likely resist it. But also, I knew that our interviews, especially for an, uh, an assistant role, are very much just like, do we like you? Yeah. Do, can, do we get along In, with you? Do, yeah, would exactly. We, would we would we vibe with you socially? So I knew that just hanging out with you was a big part of the interview, but it wasn't right. an interview. So it wasn't yeah. going to be Which like, is really what I was thinking. It wasn't going to feel any different than hanging out with somebody. Yeah. yeah. Which, Which is, is why I, I literally <laughs> thought to this day that we did have the interview. Like, cause I made, <laughs> well, we, I, we, I made, I made my decision. For me, it wasn't an interview. For me, I was just like, I told them we're not going to do a big interview. We'll just talk and hang out and huh. have a good time, have a yep. party. See? And we're at a party. Everybody's drinking. I was like, I was like a cocktail or two in. I was like, you want to ask me questions about my life? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you might do that anyway with somebody. I'll do you that just, anyway man, who played who here? I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I think we both played each other, we Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? It worked. It worked. It worked. I mean, out. if yeah. you. But yeah, yeah, I ended up talking with Jesse and Christy the most out of everyone and just like, I mean, adored them. I was like, all right, all right. If these women are married to these men, uh, all right, I right. can, I can, oh, right. I'll Listen, give this interview yeah. a shot. I, I use, <laughs> definitely, I use Jesse as a, as my like secret weapon for first impressions most of the time. Cause I'm just like, it's, if we're going someplace as a couple, I know that she's going to be outgoing in a, in, in like very, very warm and people are going to connect with her. And then I'm like, okay, she, she kind of, in fact, it's actually made me be able to sort of just like retreat a little bit, which may not be a positive thing. Cause I'm like, I know that she's gonna be super sweet and super nice to these people and like start a conversation. She's gonna start disclosing something she probably should disclose the first time that she meets somebody because <laughs> she's an oversharer. Yeah, yeah. But people feel trusted and connected with, and then, and then she can kind of tell me, well, yeah, I really like this person. And then I'm like, okay, well next time I'll also talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is similar, cause, uh, her and I are very similar, because I, I have a tendency, if in the right circumstances, someone asks a, a personal question, I'm, I'll overshare. If they ask, I'm going to just share. I'm like, all right. Well, you don't even have to ask Jesse. <laughs> yeah, she'll just say it. <laughs> but another thing it's about that party- It's not oversharing if, you, if you're comfortable sharing it, though. Unless other people are uncomfortable hearing oh. it, oh. I suppose. Oh, is that a component? Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. had a very... <laughs> you might give you a little insight into links. The I've had a very works. interesting life. I've had a lot of crazy things happen. And sometimes when I say things, people are very uncomfortable because they're like, oh, huh. I, I, I do... F I feel like... and b b Well, okay. I, I get that. I, I think my mentality is... I'd rather put a little bit more of myself out there, even if it's like people are like reeling a little bit, because it is part of who I am. And if that's not, if, if you're gonna have a negative reaction to that, then there's nothing here for us. And now you know that. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess another way to say it is like, you know, if you just be yourself and if people first impression is negative, and it, you're being yourself, then everybody's one because you, you you can both move on, and you're not, you know, you're not. Uh, it's not manipulative, mm -hmm. you know. So it's in the moment. I'm. I think I do err on the side of risking making somebody feel a little uncomfortable. Hopefully, with my it, as long as it's with something that's that's true of me then I'm giving them information where they can run for the hills kind of a thing. So maybe I'm being defensive here, but I, honestly, I think that that's part of what's behind it is like, you know, this might be a 10 minute conversation and you might be like, is that guy always like that? Or is this, guy, you know? And then you might say like, is that guy always like that? Cause I like that guy. Or is that guy always like that? Cause I'm never talking to him again. Mission accomplished. But if people get the wrong impression of you. Yes. It do, then it that, backfires. I don't want that. Right. Right. So, yeah. So if people get confused and don't know, because I agree with your mentality in general, and I think you should always be yourself, 
but if you're if you like oh I said something to that person that's offensive and I actually didn't mean to offend them and now I've got something that I need to that, that I mean that's the only thing if, to if people are going to be offended by me in our first interaction let's not have a second one I I do care I don't want to offend people okay. but if there's certain things that like if you take yourself too seriously it's not going to work for us honestly you know I mean and I don't want to hurt people's feelings. But that's how I feel about it. I mean, it was like, wow, Jenna, she's really an open book. But something she shared made me uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, do you regret sharing it? If that's information that like you were comfortable sharing, that then it's like, as long as it didn't trigger them. I think for me, it's one of those people that's just like, it's a realization of, because I've, some of my stories are unusual for a lot of, people so then it's like seeing their reaction and be like oh uh right right i am not normal cool should i and then it becomes this thought of like does that person deserve to know this thing about me yes that i but again that's a you thing not mm -hmm. a them thing yeah right mm -hmm. to me that's where i draw the line i mean there's like a couple of different lines that i'm trying to draw but like i i'm i i like talking about this because yeah, I'm dialing it in. <laughs> I'm dialing, dialing it in, yeah. you know? Well, it worked. So you, you, got, you got me. That's you got right, it worked. <laughs> it worked in this instant. Another thing about that party, I will say, that kind of uh, sold me a bit was um, the bonsai tree uh, trimmer who was there at the party, mm -hmm. yep. who was uh, trimming a, a giant bonsai tree the whole, the whole party. Yeah. And we, I had this, I was like, that, that is something I've never seen. I seriously had, like, a 30 minute conversation with that man. Yeah. I was very fascinated. And I was like, these guys. That was our idea. These that guys was our brought, insistence. Yeah. I was like, these guys brought this to a party. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just so people who wanted to talk to him could talk to he him. He hasn't been back since, though. <laughs> nope. Yeah. We, that's, we would love for him. That's our back. fault. <laughs> well, let's, let's see what this one holds. So, my first video I watched of Rhett and Link, uh, Good Mythical Morning was eight weird ways to open a bottle. And my Man, first thought was, why are these grown men having so much fun hmm. opening a uh, orange soda? <laughs> I thought it was so strange. And I decided to not watch any of their videos for like a, a month because I, I was so confused. Uh, but I ended up watching more videos. Um, and here I am eight years later. So... Shout out to Eight Weird Ways to Open a Bottle and that very, very strange time I had. So we were having too much fun? We scared her away? We were too old to have too much, as much fun as we were having. And you know what? We gave her the information and it took her a month. She let it settle. To figure out that she needed that in her life. The next time she had orange soda and she was like, look, think of all the ways I could open this with my eye socket. <laughs> I don't I you, I think that actually using your eye socket was not one of them, but it was the thumbnail. Yeah. That right. was a, kind of a deceptive thumbnail. Yep, yep, yep. We don't do that often. The first thing I remember about seeing Rhett and Link on the internet was actually um, when I was 13 or 14, I saw the thumbnail for the season three Good Mythical Morning episode titled The Most Amazing Optical Illusions on the Internet. And uh, at the time, uh, seeing the thumbnail, I uh, it looked fishy to me, and I, in my head, thought it was something potentially sexually explicit, so I did not click on it. Uh, but that thumbnail kept popping up in my feed. What? And one day, I... You know, being a horny teenager, I was like, all right, I'm going to click on it and watch whatever this is. And I click on it, and it, it was nothing very explicit. <laughs> it was two dudes on the internet looking at uh, optical illusions. But uh, that's kick-started seven, eight years ago of being a fan. Um, love what you all do. But, yep, that's how I got interested. Wow. Talk about being disappointed. Like, he he had to work up the nerve and the well the drive to uh, click on the video. You're looking at the thumbnail right now. I'm I'm trying to make sure that this that, is that's it. definitely it's it. It's gotta be it. That, that was definitely it. It's got this So it's from eight it's from nine years ago. It's the uh well it started playing now. How many views does that have by the way? Twenty two million. 
Good gosh. So it, it's a picture of an optical illusion. It's just like a photograph of two people hugging and the one person like has a, a halter top on, but you only see the person's back. So it's like her, the shoulders are exposed. So there is a lot of skin and then, the, but like the placement of the head looks really weird. Cause it's the other person's head. It's the other person's head. I mean, I remember what it was like to be a horny teen and it doesn't, I mean, there's, there's a, more than enough skin shown in this thumbnail, even though it's just back skin. Back skin uh, upper, and arm Upper skin. back skin of a woman. It doesn't take much. Um, that is hilarious. But I, it's funny because I wouldn't have thought that it was sexually explicit, but I would have clicked on it because there was so much skin. Right, right. Maybe we should put more skin in our thumbnails. All the skin on our faces. We just put so thumbnail. much face skin. Hi, Rhett. Hi, Link. Um, the first Good Mythic Morning episode I saw was the Outrageous Camping Gear You Must Own episode <laughs> from eight years ago. At the time, I was probably nine years old, and I remember watching it and thinking, wow, this is really boring. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to continue watching this. But then a while later, when the Will It episodes came out, that just piqued my interest, and I've been a fan ever since. So thank you guys for such amazing content. Well, somebody gave us a second chance. You never get a second chance to bore somebody out of their minds when they're nine years old. You know what, being nine, that was the problem, honestly. I'm thinking, oh, what kind of camping are you doing? You don't, I have, just you don't have a like, budget for camping. I feel Why like you this, story, on this, video? this story reinforces my theory, um, which I think is maybe the, uh, a, a mirror to your theory. Germans love David Hasselhoff. So if your theory is you're gonna give people potentially too much, and if too much is too much for them, then you don't need anything with them. I go in thinking, I'm gonna give you too little, and if too little of me, the little bit of me that I do give you, if you don't like the little bit of me that I give you, then you're not gonna like the more of me that I give you. So therefore, the next time we meet, I might give you a little bit more, and oh. that's my prerogative. And again, I think that's just a personality disposition. I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. I just don't tend to be extra in general. It's just not my disposition. Yeah. So if I'm not gonna be and extra- And then I'll, I'll simmer down. And if I'm gonna be a little bit not enough, right? Because I do worry about that sometimes. I'm like, ah, did I just, did I come across as like boring or uninteresting? Because I like, I'm, I'm in this town of really interesting people. And if I just seem like some, you know, tall guy with Jesus hair who stands in the corner and doesn't talk to anybody. Like, uh, you know, I don't want, I don't want to be that guy necessarily. Um, but in this case, I can't remember her name now. Uh, when she was nine, she watched the video. She thought we were boring, but there was something, there was something that she saw that she was willing to come back later. Will it? And then be like, okay, I'm gonna give these guys another chance. I think I just, I'm- Food. I think I'm just believing in the second, that you never get a second chance. You, you, you know what? You might get a second chance to make a second exp impression. That's my philosophy. No, you would get a first chance to make a second impression. That's what I've been trying to tell you. You never get a second chance to make any number of impression. It's, you only get one chance with every number of impressions. It is a, yeah, you might get the, a first chance to make a second impression, but I might call that the next chance. You might get another chance to make another impression. Yep. That's my fault. There's always another chance to make another impression. There's, that's that's that what the, the shampoo That's Selsen Blue right there. <laughs> There's always another chance like, to make another us. impression. Like try us. If that didn't work for you, try us. Yeah. There you go. And also, I think that's consistent with our uh, mentality of putting so much content on the internet. If you didn't like us here, forget it you and cannot, see if you can like us you here. You cannot avoid us if you have an internet connection. We, ah. we've, we've made that very clear. Right, right, right. That's good. And boy, if you don't like us, which again, stand in line, there's a lot of people. We've, we give you ample reason over and over again every single day. It's like, those guys are now doing this? Man. Maybe I'm the one who's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not. Saturation. <laughs> you're not. We're, we've oversaturated. We're not for everybody, but we're for you. You know what? We are for you. Yeah, if you've made it this far in this podcast, yeah, we probably are for you. Yep. So thank you for sticking around. Uh, we're going to keep doing this again this year, again, every single week. 
there's going to be another Ear Biscuit, just like this one. You can count on it. Hashtag Ear Biscuits uh, to give us your written feedback. And if you want to call in and just let us know how you're processing all this, please do. one 888 earpod one And I have a little wreck. Yes, you do. Uh, I talked about this in a recent podcast, so I'm not going to go into detail, but I'm going to, it wasn't my official wreck, and now it is. A uh, very, very famous book, Man's Search for Meaning from Viktor Frankl. It's like four and a half hours if you wanna listen to it. So I don't know how many hours that is if you wanna actually read it, but it's a small time commitment and a big reward for hearing about mostly his experiences, uh, you know, through uh, the- uh, Concentration the camps. Concentration camps during the Holocaust. the Holocaust. Yeah, so it's, you know, puts things in perspective. Man's for, Search for Meaning. All right, talk at you next week, love you. Hi, my name is Cadence, and my uncle absolutely loves you guys, and he's actually a straight sweeper. And when he heard Link talking about how he's jealous of street sweepers, he actually cried happy tears because it <laughs> he never felt like he was really that important, and it was just... It, it was a nice thing for him. Anyway, I hope y'all have a good day. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.